The following will be a discussion on the laparoscopic harvest of the great oral mantle flap following sternectomy. Omentum is used because it is lymphocyte rich, has good immunologic properties, as well as a good vascular supply. It is malleable with excellent bulk, and it has less postoperative pain compared to muscle flap use. Our patient is a 62-year-old female with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, morbid obesity, who presented with near LAD occlusion. She underwent cabbage times 2 and postoperatively developed PEA arrest, was placed on VA ECMO, and subsequently had deep sternal wound infection, which required a wide sternectomy. She was taken to the OR on postoperative day 16 for a mental flap coverage of the defect. Here is the post-sternectomy defect. Operative steps include coloepiploic detachment, mobilization of greater omentum pedicled on the right gastroploic artery, the division of the anastomotic branches between Barco's arcade and the gastroepiploic arcade, sub-xiphoid incision with transposition of the flap into the mediastinum with subsequent fixation. Depicted here is the relevant anatomy, including a schematic of a pedicled greater omental flap based on the right gastroepiploic artery. Access was initially attained by using a 5 millimeter optical port in the supraumbilical position, followed by three additional 5 millimeter ports under direct visualization. A Nathanson retractor was subsequently used for liver and greater curvature retraction. The procedure began with the mobilization of the transverse colon off the greater omentum laterally towards the splenic flexure. Subsequently, the greater omentum was dissected free from direct splenic attachments. Attention was then paid to mobilization of the right gastroepiploic artery off the greater curvature of the stomach. Care is taken to preserve the right gastropoplaric artery as well as not damaging the stomach itself. Here we can see the completion of the mobilization of the greater curvature. Next, a Nathanson retractor is inserted into the abdomen for retraction of the liver and the greater curvature of the stomach. The greater omentum is then dissected free from the transverse colon towards the hepatic flexure, being careful not to injure the gastroduodenal artery. An avascular plane can be seen. Additional dissection is needed to free the transverse colon from the greater omentum towards the splenic flexure. The remainder of the greater curvature of the stomach is freed from the greater omentum, taking care to preserve the right gastropoploic artery. Attention is then paid to dissecting Barco's arcade off the posterior gastropoploic attachments.
the bulk of the greater omental flap can make the remainder of this dissection difficult. In order to better visualize the remaining attachments, the flap can be mobilized towards the hepatic flexure of the colon. Here we can see the completion of that dissection. Because the patient already had a sternectomy, the peritoneum can be entered directly in order to uh, deliver the omental flap. This can also be accomplished via a sub incision, which could deliver the flap to either pleura. The flap has good bulk and is able to be delivered without any tension. Prior to fixation, we can see the sternal defect with the completion of the omental flap in view. A five milligram bolus of indocyanine green was then given to visualize good flap vascularity. Some pearls to follow during dissection are that during the coloepiploic detachment, be sure to enter the lesser sac and identify the posterior stomach and stay in an avascular plane. When dissecting towards the hepatic flexure, be sure not to injure the gastroduodenal artery. The left gastroepiploic vessel can be used but is usually less robust, and using the right gastropopoic, you can reach either pleura as well as the mediastinum. A sub incision can be used to deliver the flap into either pleura when a sternectomy has not been performed. Here we can see the wound postoperative day four after wound vac removal. Here we can see the wound postoperative day 14 showing good granulation tissue. By postoperative day 26, the patient had already undergone a bilateral pectoralis myocutaneous flap, was awake working with physical therapy, and only demonstrated a small area of skin necrosis, which was stable on your incision. In conclusion, the greater omental flap is safe and can be used for complex mediastinal and pleural flap coverage. Performing the procedure with a minimally invasive technique reduces morbidity. Knowledge of the anatomy of the greater omentum is essential for a successful completion of this procedure.